Daniel, you're an important artist in this exhibition, uh, which is a photography exhibition, because you're actually not really a photographer. So uh, how, how do you um, think of your identity in terms of mediums, or do you at all? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think of it like that at all. In fact, I feel like I make a conscious effort not to uh, think about medium. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty suspect of, of an approach that tries to carry on a historical tradition. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we're, like, as an artist, I'm kind of dedicated to discovery, and it seems like if you've already decided that the end product is going to be in X medium, then how can you make discoveries in that situation? So. Mm -hmm. um, I think in a way, I mean, your presence in the exhibition kind of calls to attention a problematic that's in the show, uh, which is that we are trying to carry on a tradition in photography, and that's a good problematic problem problematic to have involved in the show so visibly, um, because uh, you know it raises a debate as to whether or not photography should be carrying on and considered a singular medium or not. And uh, we've tried, obviously, to make it cohere and be continuous as a history involving contemporary works and older works. But, but I think it's important, though, to have that sort of visible questioning of the medium itself yeah. involved in the presence of works such as yours. I mean, um, the camera is probably one of the tools I use most in the mm -hmm. studio, right. at the same time that I don't consider myself a photographer. But you, like many people, um, you, uh, you, you work a set of ideas, you have a set of interests, and you employ different mediums to explore those, right? So uh, can you categorize what, what ideas you normally sort of revolve around in, in the different works you make? Yeah, um, I mean, I definitely, I definitely am a studio artist, so there are certain parameters. Um, and so what I'm interested in is kind of exploring, I'll start with some materials and start to see how meaning happens or doesn't happen in a, in a kind of improvisational way. Mm -hmm. um, so even the, the, the works in this exhibition are, came out of that process of juxtaposition. You put one image next to another and meaning may or may not start to <laughs> occur. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. and, um, and then, and so even with the, this, these photos with the arrangements, I had no idea that the end product would then be a photograph. So. Well, using the, the joiner, which is in the exhibition as an example, I mean, how did that work develop? What was the first step you took that resulted in that big picture with all of those different things on it? Right. Um, you know, uh, taking a tool off the shelf and putting it on the floor and, you know, being in the library and finding an image that just seemed that reminded me of something else that was in my studio and taking that and putting that down and then slowly uh, not so much a theme but it was as though a work were being made as though it was going to become a project and then I wanted to kind of freeze that moment before it became something so to freeze this process of, of kind of thinking through materials thinking through images collecting as, as a method and then and so I decided okay it's done Mm -hmm. How do I freeze it? Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided to then take a photograph of the whole scene. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it really developed organically in a certain sense. Mm -hmm. um, what kinds of yeah. meanings do you think those objects together start to um, create? I mean, what, yeah. what was the sort of first, the early syntax of the development mm -hmm. of meaning you were discovering and putting the tool next to the, <laughs> right. the picture? Uh, you know, it started at first as a, a random, and then slowly some ideas started to emerge, and um, one of the ideas that did emerge by the time I got to that specific piece was this idea of joining and putting together, so the joiner, mm -hmm. and, so, and that title comes from one of the, there's a, a book that's open at a, the Diderot Encyclopedia that's open to a page that says the joiner, mm -hmm. and it's a woodworker joining two pieces of wood together. And so I was thinking about my own process of in Photoshop 
joining these hundreds of images that I was stitching together. Mm -hmm. um, and so then a lot of the other uh, imagery and objects started to play with this idea mm -hmm. of constructing an image mm -hmm. as though it, you were a woodworker or a builder. And technically it's digitally constructed, right? So in a way you're picturing old tools one might find in a studio, old sort of you have you have imagery from an older era of an artist studio, but you're using a very contemporary yeah. technique to join things together. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and a very analog mm -hmm. idea of joining. So there's pieces of wood and a saw, mm -hmm. and then here it is with this very digital technique of, of joinery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's interesting too the idea you. I know in your other work too, you always like to seem to stop, stop the process before it's fully realized or something. You interrupt, you interrupt the artistic process before you have the sort of fully polished, completed, um, you know, sort of comprehensible object. Yeah. Um, is that is that an idea that um, that that relates in your mind to some? aspect of the culture or just in the in terms of the way we understand our objects do you feel like there's a sense of incompletion in general in our culture or is it or is it more of a of, a, of an attempt to sort of maintain some mystery for these sort of uh, these sort of essences of meaning that you're yeah. looking for yeah I mean I think it does, I think it relates in a sense to I, I think certain artists take an approach of, of putting an idea out there at, and taking a position and in relation to other positions, in relation to history, mm -hmm. and so maybe this kind of attempt to leave things open is fighting against that and is maybe comes from a dedication, a kind of like working through material and a listening to material. Mm -hmm. um, and or listening to the process of making mm -hmm. and trying to stay de dedicated to that. Um, it's a much more um, intuitive and spontaneous uh, process. In a way, you're trying to you're trying to represent the the experience of thinking about these these objects. And, yeah, and I mean, it's also like it's not interesting to me unless I'm learning something, mm -hmm. right? And I don't. I, I haven't, there's no point in making anything unless I'm learning. And so what methods in the studio can you develop that will ha produce that, those results, mm -hmm. right? That will provide me with some sense of surprise and wonder. Right. And then hopefully in an ideal situation that actually translates for the viewer has that same experience. It results in a total object of some kind and actually the joiner is a very polished looking picture but you do get that sense of um, of it being a puzzle or something like that. Yeah. Um, a puzzle in you know in process. Yeah. I, um, I saw um, the sculptor Ursula von Reidingsvard speak one time and she makes these giant you know wood sculptures. Uh, I'm just saying this for the microphone. Yeah. But um, but someone asked her at the end of her talk why, why she felt so compelled to make these giant cavernous sculptures, abstract sculptures, and she said, because I'm addicted to the process, because I get involved in it, and I think it's going to fail, and I'm fighting against it, and then I finally conquer it, and I want to do that over and over again. Yeah. And it's, a very, it's a very macho um, statement um, in this case, but I think you're sort of doing the same thing, except you have a different set of satisfactions you're looking for, perhaps. Yeah, but it definitely is about a kind of pleasure in mm -hmm. making and a joy of making and unmaking and mm -hmm. and to keep that kind of pleasure alive and, and, and rich. Yeah. You know, I think in some ways it, 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 you know, it goes back to lots of earlier modern conceptions of what art making was and people conceived of it as something like child's play and uh, for a long time during the middle of the century, the 20th century, it seems to me that people were so sort of heroic and bombastic about that process but um, it seems to me now that there's more of a mood of reclaiming that, that notion of pleasure and uh, the play of children in doing things and also just sort of discovering, learning, you know, through through art making. Yeah, and then I, I give a lot of credit to John Cage for that, mm -hmm. you know, this dedication to kind of pleasure over meaning and, mm -hmm. and that, you know, 
sometimes sounds are just sounds and they don't, <laughs> you know, represent something else. Mm -hmm. That's right. Or, Music is especially good for that because it's essentially so detached from, you know, uh, references. You know. Um, so in in the other work in the exhibition, mergers the um, these are appropriated photographs, right? You've you've gotten them from the internet. Yeah, I didn't take any of the photos. You weren't present right. for the uh, <laughs> for the deals, <laughs> no. the announcements. At no, I wish I was, but. Um, <laughs> No, I found them, you know, on the internet, but, I mean, in 98, the uh, resolution of images on the internet was pretty low still. So I found some online, but a lot from the newspapers and, and uh, you know, old-fashioned clipping with scissors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Is this a political work? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was, so a lot of people read it as a critique, but at the time I was... You know, I'm also. I think it's also about being jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not uh, you're not um, uh, um, making fun of these people necessarily. You're having fun with. I them. mean, I didn't even take the photos. So I I'm actually I actually do. I and I'm being a little tongue in cheek, but I actually do see it as a kind of object. Another kind of listening to the materials objectively, mm -hmm. collecting, <clears throat> noticing juxtapositions and being look at this. So it's it's almost like it's you know, I saw I saw this happen and for the viewer I'm trying to say, hey, look at this with me mm -hmm. and it's not trying to as an artist being like, Oh, this is what the world is. Mm -hmm. The world is just, you know, I barely did anything. I got rid of the backgrounds, I cropped them in such a way and uh, framed them. Uh, to enhance that juxtaposition, but that's... I mean, more than anything, you come away uh, with a sense of joy. These men are ecstatic <laughs> over, yeah. over whatever has just gone down, and uh, not knowing... I mean, I don't know what the deals were in particular. Is David Letterman in one of the pictures? No. It looks no. like David Letterman. <laughs> no, and I thought, well, when he moved, you know, from NBC yeah. to, I don't know, but... Uh, but no, there's there's a sense of, of joy, of ecstasy, which is which is just like you know uh, completely uninhibited yeah. in the pictures, which is which is actually really pleasing and, and interesting. But at the same time, you know, one could start to think about well, what does this mean for um, people in the world who work, who work at Walmart stores or uh, you know work in factories in China or something like yeah. that? I mean, this was the the beginning the Clinton deregulation of industry and a lot mm -hmm. of mergers took place and these were probably the biggest deals of those mm -hmm. people's careers and uh, including big windfalls and uh, <laughs> and so you have Exxon Mobil in there and TCI. everybody likes to win we can all relate to that yeah but yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> Uh, when you so so if you're working in lots of different mediums and exploring different ideas through those mediums, when when you're looking at photography specifically, do you do you see with that a set of references? Does does photography come with you know its own um, its own ideas that you you can either pick up and play with or that you have to in some way um, push aside? Yeah, I mean yes, at a certain point, I, it's almost. I feel like we should talk about it as tool specificity mm -hmm. instead of medium. Right. When, when I think of medium, I think of a kind of a historical category of art. A very of, outdated historical and, category, a modernist category. Yeah, and so, but that's not to say that photography had, does you know, that photography has specific things that it's good at, mm -hmm. <laughs> that painting, say, is not good at. And, mm -hmm. and so, um, you know, with, with these photo these digital images I was trying to m maximize the potential of digital photography and mm -hmm. what it can do and trying to push that and innovate within that tool mm -hmm. um, so in in that sense I do think about it yeah. I feel like the arrangement of the different objects going back to the joiner the different objects um, on that on, they're, they're, they're in a grid essentially and I feel like looking at it it it's kind of like um, icons on a computer screen on a yeah. desktop. Am I right to see that? Yeah, I mean, it, and in, and they actually were. I mean, in terms of the making of it, you know, I can select one out and move it slightly, and um, 
for sure mm -hmm. components put together um, in imitation in some ways of the medium they're 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 engaging yeah and, and in that way it relates to it in a way you might say it's close to Rauschenberg's flat that picture plane in this way of making an image um, mm -hmm. though though this does have some perspectival space, even though it's a very sh shallow space. Yeah, and the different objects are, um, they're, they're seen from different angles, right? It's like a kind of Cezanne, um, different parts of the picture are, are seen from a different perspective, all in the same picture. Yeah. Um, well, they're, they each have their own perspective, right? So they're each seen from the exact same angle, which is this kind of 45 degree he, top side view mm -hmm. or top front view and um, and then the camera gets moved and shoots the next object at the that same angle um, it, 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 I was talking with someone recently about it's kind of a northern Renaissance uh, space as opposed to the you know single point or two point perspective of southern Renaissance meaning, perspective. meaning that it's slightly elevated is that right it's yeah, slightly but, aerial <laughs> and then the, I think it was in the Hockney book on, on lenses and photography. Uh -huh. he, he, he talked about um, how he was theorizing that they actually moved the lens in creating some of these paintings, hmm. um, as opposed to in the south where the lens was. And that's stationary. using a, a camera lucida, right? Correct. Which is a sort of drawing tool from the yeah. pre modern yeah. period. Um, um, so to go beyond photography then, but still sort of talking about photography, um, in your r most recent work, I've been to your studio, uh, you've been making these projections, which are essentially kind of photograms, or maybe I'm just a, a photo historian and I have to think of it as photographic yeah. in some way, but you project these images uh, with these sort of old overhead projectors um, onto, onto the wall, and so they become these kind of ephemeral um, paintings in quotation marks. Uh, what's that uh, work about? Yeah, um, I mean, in a way, it's a very similar mm -hmm. thing, right? And it came came from this studio process I'd been working with, Composite Woods, for a few years. And, and um, you know, and you try it, a thousand different experiments in the studio, material experiments, experimenting with different tools. Had a, I had done paintings using projection before, and at, and then at some point, you know, the projector hit happened to hit this uh, piece of MDF, and it had this strange orange glow, mm -hmm. and the sawdust, a bit of sawdust, was sitting there, and I said, hmm, maybe we should uh, <laughs> refine that a bit, and that's looking pretty good. So when I saw that projection work in your studio, I, I actually thought at first in a very trompe l'oeil sort of way that I was looking at uh, a painting on the wall that had some sort of strange uh, you know, kind of paint that was sort of fluorescent or something, and I didn't notice the projector at first. Uh, but it seems to me like um, it's, a, it's a very good way of, of expressing that sort of ephemeral, you know, in-process quality we were talking about earlier, you know, a, a good sort of advance on on that idea yeah yeah um, yeah a lot of people have described that same experience mm -hmm. of, of these projections seeming to just be glowing by themselves even though the apparatus is always fully on display right in front of you and it's noisy and all of that it's yeah. strange you don't notice it but um, but it's fun to be tricked you know yeah. and I think that's kind of going on in all of your work in a way and I think yeah. if anything the pleasure you're describing in making it is the pleasure you get in viewing it because you don't you don't really understand it often when you look at it but unlike so much contemporary art you're not put off by it I think a lot of people become very angry when you know they encounter a work of contemporary art that that is so big uh, there, there's obviously some sort of meaning or inside joke but it's so mm -hmm. buried and people actually feel really angry in response to yeah. look like that, but your work is very generous. It's very, um, it's very open to, uh, to um, thought and interpretation, and uh, it feels it feels very sort of inviting that way. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean the projections, for me, had you know there was a kind of, it it was a just pure pleasure to have that experience in the studio, and I hope that it can provide that 
for viewers as well. But I think there's also a satisfaction in seeing the apparatus in knowing how the trick is done. Mm -hmm. um, it's like seeing behind the curtain, mm -hmm. which is another satisfying aspect of being tricked, is sort of seeing how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you're just like, oh, it's just sawdust on and a lens, and wow, this stuff is actually powerful. And um, But coming back to this idea of photography, I mean, this locating the tool, you know, so it, there are some similarities in that there is this lens and there is shadow and and there are so many aspects of photography at work in that project mm -hmm. that um, I think it does it does participate in in a certain history of photography. It feels like a living form of photography. It's yeah. uh, you know almost maybe like if you thought of photography as being light and projection and the lens as you said, uh, but but you know like theater lighting or some experience you would have of photography not completed, not, not fixed, not, you know, um, solidified.